Good morning from Eve. It's a very, very lazy morning. Oh gosh. Oh, Look at this guy too. Oh gosh. So tired. Pizza, coffee, and the Grinch to start off a lazy breakfasty day. And we definitely need to update that. I think it's 45. I'm trying to get into the habit of switching between our two M50 lenses. Our baby is 10 days old. Today. Double digits. Oh my gosh. He'll Do never be single he'll digits. Look? Do you think he looks older? I think he does. He's got a belly now. It's rounded out. He's getting a little bit more hair. Getting a little bit more hair. I don't know, like... It's coming in blondy, mm -hmm. and I know that it can change darker. Like, I think my brother had blonde hair, then it went dark. But at, at what point do we know, like, oh, that's his hair? Two years, one year, six months, ten years? Never? Like, at what point? At what point do his eyes change? Like, if they're going to change. Right now, they're like this beautiful blue. Mm -hmm. But I know it's very common, but blue eyes run in the family. My eyes are like... My eyes are like gray blue turquoisey blue but like these look more like christina's eyes like jean blue which makes me think that because it's a darker blue it could easily transition to like a brown or a hazel yeah i don't know patience is a virtue they say it's something we don't have it's just funny because like i feel like the idea of ivf in people's minds are like you get to like pick the your, designer baby yeah like make sure they have the colors I think that there is like which you can like I mean yeah. like you, you can't necessarily choose to, like to change those but like we had seven embryos we we could have had them all tested to figure out you know sex different aspects different right. different genetical things um, <laughs> but I mean we couldn't we didn't one we did we wouldn't, we wouldn't want to do that and two we couldn't with our medical study yeah anyway I want this pizza let's eat do you like me sitting in the back I mean. I like that you're hanging out with our baby. <laughs> True. I miss you up through though, but I like I just look at you in the rearview mirror and I look at James through the reflector. We're enjoying some winter park. Today. Yeah. Going to check out this store called Hellcats. They are artsy fartsy people that open up a store over here on Orange Avenue? I think it's Yeah, it's still orange. It turns yeah. into Fairbanks down there. Um, they are friends of our friend Jenna Blazovich, who had that really cool like storefront that we went to. In Chicago. We'll put the link down below the, uh, from the vlog that we went there. And so, James is saying, let's go. Oh my goodness. We will get to move in. Oh, big yawn. this awesome plant store to look for two very specific plants to go above her desk that we hung those white hung those white planters months and months and months ago we're finally oh gosh he sleeps like he sleeps like his mom and dad does with his eyes closed they're open here are the plants i picked for right above the um the computer aren't they pretty Our destination is a little consignment shop. I think it's back here. Okay, we're in this like tucked away little shop area behind Park Avenue. Delicious ancient olive place. See this beautiful? That's a restaurant that I think Sarah and I should go to very soon called Garp and Fuss. I want to go hang out up there because there's this witch statue in seats up there. But the unfortunate news is the shop that we are looking for has closed. I'm just happy it's not because of COVID. It's because of a leak in the building. Yeah. You can still shop online, but. We'll come back when it's reopened. Yeah. This fountain is full. This is a little memorial for those who serve self. Perfect for Veterans Day. 
a little relaxing last bench seat is being cut off by the rain. Also, we were going to go to an outdoor happy hour, but then we looked at the radar and there's about guaranteed 100% rain for the next hour. Yeah, so. just too soon for him to go into a restaurant. Into a restaurant. So, let's go to the car. <laughs> Luckily, it's right here. Yeah. So we ended up getting this print from Hellcats. All the same on the inside. Love it. And then I also got this little button. Christmas lights for days, boom, boom. Christmas kinda for days, boom, boom. Christmas lights for days, boom, boom. So we just put on white Christmas to really get the Christmas vibes going before we start our special awesome concert night that we don't even know if we've told you about. This is coming up to a close, but I had to show you the sweetest sight in my entire life. Your entire life? Yeah, how are these two? I got Dr. Pepper from McDonald's. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Much better. I had to pop a different lens on this to show how sweet this peanut is. I know another one of my inner old man tendencies is the holidays I love just to sit with an old Christmas movie on and just crack all these different kinds of holiday nuts. There's no greater time than trying to properly crack all of these and enjoy them. Today is November 11th. 11 11. 11 11. And so every year, Andrew McMahon, our favorite artist, what do you do? Doing that blue blur from the office. <laughs> <laughs> so Andrew has a foundation called the Deer Jack Foundation and every year on this date he has a big concert, fundraiser, all of that for his foundation which is for adolescent cancer raising money and awareness because um, he himself battled cancer and there was like this gray area between childhood cancer and adult cancer and he kind of felt in the like fell in the middle and it, he's just raising awareness or like being a young adult but at a children's hospital but also the treatments were different and then it's right. like it, it was just like not the best space right and so his foundation um does a lot of great work to raise money and um awareness and whatnot and so every year on 11 11 they have this big event well this year covid happened um but like we say with acs cancer does not stop for covid um so it's a virtual event it's a live stream. We bought tickets and it's just like access and we have access I think for the rest of the week we can watch it. It starts in five minutes. Yes and there's other artists too like Alan Stone which we saw um, when we first saw Andrew here, um, Stephen Kellogg, Matt Nathanson, Ivory Lane who we love. Um, so we're gonna spend the rest of our night watching that. Yes. And Andrew McMahon only plays this one special song. Constantine. Constantine. Once a year and it's at this performance because it's how long? Like 11 minutes? It's like nine minutes. Nine minutes. But everybody loves it and everybody begs for him to play it at all of his live concerts. And it just concerts. happens to be our song. Yes. And um, so he only plays it. We were literally, I mean, it's different because of COVID and different because of James, but we were like, no matter what we have to do, we're <laughs> flying to the 11-11 show this year. Um, oh, no. James needs our assistance, but <laughs> the show's about to start. Here we go. Hooked up my computer to the TV. We got 27 seconds left until the 11th annual Dear Jack Benefit Concert, Hammers and Strings, an evening of hopeful songs for a harder times benefiting the Dear Jack Foundation. There's Andrew himself. I hope to shake his hand one day. 15 years ago is when I found out that I was a, uh, a cancer patient, and I've been 15 years a survivor. Um, it's incredible to look back on that journey now through the lens of Dear Jack. This is, oh look at this show. We don't talk as much. This is Hammers and Strings, one of my favorite Andrew songs. I don't think we've ever heard that live. Old we haven't. Read me a song. For a while, flying for a while. Whoa. song we've been waiting for, Constantine. I can't imagine all the people that you know. 
Can you believe that James is 10 days old already? So we started getting ourselves into our bed, uh, bedtime groove, and then Sarah and I kind of threw it all to the window today by being a little lazier. Sarah dozed off. I got distracted by the TV. So now it's like midnight, and James was fast and deep asleep, but he was not in his right PJs or his swaddle or anything. So we just woke him up to get him back into his PJs and everything. So fingers crossed he stays asleep enough to stay asleep for a few hours. Only time will tell. Um, but Sarah's finishing getting him ready after I change his diaper and get his PJs on. She's swallowing him up and getting him in the bassinet. So I gotta close this down. All right, today is November 11th. Happy Veterans Day. Tomorrow's my final day of paternity leave. Today's course by Maya Angelou. If you must look back, do so forgivingly. If you must look forward, do so prayerfully. However, the wisest thing you could do is be present in the present, gratefully. I love it. Cannot believe my two weeks of paternity leave are coming to an end tomorrow. Um, but it'll be exciting to get back to like my new normal of like work and James and Sarah and Eve and me. So I'm, I'm kind of, it's weird. I'm like not wanting to go back, but I'm also excited to go back. Um, we'll figure it out. Friday morning will be interesting, um, especially because we have a, a, a an appointment with our pediatrician Friday, so I'm not even starting work on my normal time on Friday. Um, anyway, it's good to be home. We know what our goals are, we know what we hope to accomplish, and believe me, it's the most exciting and challenging assignment we've ever tackled at Walt Disney Productions.